Hi guys, and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how to use XSplit. Now what you're seeing on my screen is my actual desktop. Yes, I'm still running Windows 7 on this PC, but that's not the point. The point is today we're going to be, oh, well, I'm going to be explaining to you how to set up your XSplit because a lot of people during a couple of my live streams have asked me how to use XSplit over OBS because uh, uh, XSplit seems a little too intimidating. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be making a few assumptions. Assumption one, I'm going to assume that you have it downloaded, that you have an account, and that you have logged in. So with those assumptions out of the way, let's take a look at some simple things, shall we? Like first things first, uh, 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 your, your setup, your overlays, and various other things. As you can see, this is my desktop. And of course, here, for some reason, there I am. Hi, is my webcam. Now, webcam aside, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set all of this up. So first things first, what we're going to do is say we didn't have our webcam up. So say we're just at our, at our desktop. Now this video may be in multiple parts, and if it is, I, am, I apologize. If, it, if it's in one great big video, just stick with it. So what you want to do is you want to click on add and then other and then you're going to see a whole bunch of things here but you're not because you haven't downloaded them yet you've got to go to the plugin store so you click get plugins from the plugin store now i suggest you stay away from third-party plugins with xsplit stick with only xsplit approved plugins because i know some people who like to use third-party plugins now you're going to get a little pop-up like this. this is the little store and then you just click and you click install click click install click click install you click the ones you want legacies are the old versions that have been updated for the new ones as you can see there's two versions of the playlist a brand new one and a white and an older one just download all of those depending on your internet connection now now you've got all of those let's set you up with a uh, a source so over here you'll have one, two, three, it'll, it'll be numbered. I've picked this one called Experts uh, uh, Tutorial. You can name it up here to what you want. Do you see what I'm saying? You can name it to whatever you want so you don't get confused. Now, now that that's done, we're going to take a look at adding, say, an overlay. Okay, so you'll want to go to Media File. You get a pop-up go to where your your images are stored okay this is my desktop it's currently messy right now so say we want an overlay so I'm gonna have to go to my uh, my pictures here pictures and I'm gonna have to go up to overlays and then from here as you can see I have several overlays for several different games I'm gonna grab a generic minimalistic overlay real quick and then we're gonna drag it out and there you go you have your overlay now don't forget you can also scale your viewports uh, no, inception sort of thing so you can now see your overlay in action now overlays must always go up top first now you can choose to disable you can choose to disable the screen so when you do something like this you don't get an inception sort of thing sorry about that for a brief minute but um now say we want to add a webcam so you see webcam capture card and video devices this lists my hd capture card for when i'm live streaming xbox 360 footage it also has my logitech uh, c920 pro one of the best goddamn webcams out there okay and uh so this is where you would want to set it depending upon your overlay some overlays say webcam must go here must go here must go there must go there must go everywhere now i'll put my webcam here and then you, you can move these little arrow keys down see to denote where you want them in your lineup always have your overlay on top 
okay that way it always shows you're always showing your followers and everything else now green screen right click go to color chroma key legacy mode just check legacy mode and boom look no fuzzies no nothing perfect green screen perfect see you guys it's that easy now bear in mind the smaller your webcam the more pixelated you're going to look regardless of your upload okay guys that is regardless of your upload so now we've got a webcam now we've got a little overlay how do they do that little text thing on the thing well i'm going to cover that for you guys now i have a couple of additional programs to help me when i stream i'm going to list them for you now you don't have to use these i just use these personally when i live stream first things first i use an akbot r2 a n k h b o t r2 you can get it at the following address again vid uh, uh, links will be in the video description this is basically the best bot i have ever had has a youtube video player has a, uh, a currency system so you can do giveaways stuff like that even has mini games like bank heists polls you name it it's absolutely pretty cool has an event system as well you can even uh, sync it to your google docs so for example say you're uh, uh, doing a podcast like i do you can actually have your google google docs synced in with the bot so when you move on to a next subject you know choosing your scene selection the bot sees the scene the, the scene change and actually brings up the google docs for you which is actually pretty cool uh, then we've got a sound effect system now this is where my viewers can type in commands like rage and you hear it uh, let's see if the preview works no preview's not working right now again this bot is a little bit buggy this version but still um you can set it up for you know a whole bunch of different things So we're gonna say we're gonna edit this one, okay? Yeah, this is what pisses me off. I'll go, look, look, another fuck people, Treyarch, you fucking suck. That is actually a buddy of mine. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm not gonna say his name, but he's another streamer, and I use this program. This program is called Subalert. Now, this uh, this program hasn't been updated in quite some time. And it's quite tragic because it really is an epic program. And so pretty much what this does is this will keep track of my followers, my donations. If I do giveaways, if I'm being hosted, and my subscribers. It covers both Twitch and Hitbox. This is what makes this program very unique. And I use that. So let me show you what it does. So we hit the edit button and there it is that's basically what happens when someone hits the follow button as you can see so i'll hit save and close and start so you see this great big green bar now we're gonna go at, i have multiple displays if uh, I'm, I'm just putting that disclaimer up now i have three displays on my gaming rig each display holds a specific thing for example my right monitor holds chat and everything else so i can read chat real time center monitor has the game right monitor has all my bots my team speak and everything else so and it also has my uh sub alert so we're going to grab that and then we're going to right click color chroma key there we go now she's gone right so say we didn't have this up up You'd hit show log, show donations. With this money See? comes power. <laughs> and that's what shows up when someone sends a message when they want to donate, etc., etc. So now we've got that aside. That's sub alert. You can also use Nightbot. You can also use Moobot. You can use a whole bunch of web-based bots. But I don't suggest you do, uh, simply because that does leave you open to being DDoSed as well as doxed. Because, again... Uh, some of these bots aren't on secure servers so you're always better hosting it yourself via 
Subala, Via, and Akabot. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? So that helps you. Plus, also, if you're behind a VPN, that's another good step. But that's a different video. Now, now you've got your bot set up and whatnot. Let's sort out some of that scrolling text. So you're going to go down to add text. You're going to a little pop up. Now, this is where you've got to be careful. This is where you can easily bugger things up. This is the newer version. You want to check keep source in memory. Always check that. Keep source in memory. Then scrolling will go right to left. Not top to bottom. We're not Star Wars yet. Okay. So we're going to go right to left. So now if you want to use a custom script, you just click custom script, edit script. Blank template. Then you want load text from a local file. Then you want to check that little box. And of course, this is where. There we go. So we're going to go back to our C drive to where we have subalert installed, then logs. Now, this is where you get to look. This is where, for, where your subscribers are, your followers are, and your donations. For example, say we want a follower check. So we have last follower, update text. And there you go. Now you can move it to wherever you want. You can also resize it. Now notice how we have uh, newest follower in the lower corner. So we drag that to the lower corner. Then we resize it. Drag it back down again. Resize it. And there you go. Just make sure that the texts are above the overlay now. So it's text. Then overlay. Then you know webcam and games. Your game has to be at the bottom. And your overlay near the top in order for it to look perfect okay guys so and then you just repeat so say you want to add a donator text okay again check source in memory use custom script edit script from local file and then say we want That's not giving me my back button today. Okay. Sub alert. Logs. Now we did followers. Let, let's let's do donation, shall we? Let's do uh you can do top donator, last donator amount, last donator message. We'll do last donator. Update text. We'll scroll it right to left. Okay. And because sub no, I haven't received any donations since I restarted Subalert. This text file is constantly being written to. So that's where it would go right there in, the, in your overlay, where you put it in your overlay. I'll do a video on how to design an overlay if you guys want. Leave a, a comment in the video section down in the comment section down below. Give the video a like and I'll, and I'll keep making more uh, uh, expert tutorials like this. Now you've got your nice shiny overlay and whatnot. Let's quickly grab a game real quick. Um, I've got so many. Let, let's just grab a real quick one. Let's grab Brutal Doom. Go to the display options real quick. Sorry, set video mode. There we go. So now we've got our game. So you want to capture it. Now, some of the guides you're going to read will tell you to just select auto. Okay? Problem with that is it's going to grab anything that registers via DirectX. As you can see, my bot registers via DirectX. So the moment I click on my bot, my entire screen is going to turn into my bot, which is what, not what I want. So you want to want to find your game, which is what we just did. Okay, there it is. So we're going to stretch out the game real quick. And then remember, use the down arrows. And ta-da, that's it. You've just done that. 
Now you've got your game. Got your overlay. Got your webcam. Got everything. You're ready to go. This is where you're going to start the bugger up. Okay? So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the desktop real quick. Okay? Let's bring that down. And we're going to explain how you actually do this now. So, we're going to go to broadcast. Then we're, you're going to click this little gear cog. Okay? Now, you're going to want to authorize your account. So, make sure you're logged in on Twitch or Hitbox, whatever you use. Now, I use web author authorization. I used to use a stream key authorization, but since the stream key server keeps getting DDoSed, you hardly get to log in that way. So I direct log in now using my username and password. And no, I'm not going to give you my username and password. Um, don't bother trying to copy these settings. These settings are going to be meaningless to you because you do not have my internet connection. So what you want to do is once you've authorized, it's going to ask you to select a server. Now, this is where your stream latency comes in. This is where your lag in video games come in. This is where your video lag comes in. As you can see, if I really wanted a really bad connection, I'd clearly connect to Singapore and Asia. I mean, 11.24 MS jitter on my video, 204 MS average on latency, and 100, 200 and something MS on, on do you see what I'm saying? It's just no. You always want to find the server with the lowest numbers to you. Okay? For me, it happens to be San Jose, California. Go freaking figure. So, uh, up until then, it was Texas, believe it or not. It was uh, Dallas, Texas. But uh, that's, uh, again, those servers are, recent, are having a lot of issues. So, once you've found the server that's closest to you, test your bandwidth. Okay? Of course, I can't do it while I'm recording, but test your bandwidth. And then once that's done, you'll get a, a, an, a little image telling you what your bit rate should be. So type that in. For example, my, it says mine should be bit rate uh, 2,122 or some stupid number. So I bumped it. To, I rounded it up to 2,200. Now, I can go as high as 4,000 if I want to because of my internet connection. Now, let me explain something to you. Twitch, when you're live streaming, it's not about your download, okay? You can have a, 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 a dedicated T3, you know, 50 gigabyte download and a 512 upload. You're not going to stream. You're not going to be able to stream because it's a 50-50 on your connection. It's 50% upload, 50% download. Okay, your download is for downloading patches and connecting and, and various other things. But your upload is what matters because you're uploading the raw data to Twitch's servers. Do you understand this now? So your upload is what matters. And that's what the bit rate is. The bit rate is set for your upload. Now, I've set a, a, an X264 encoder. If you have an NVIDIA card, you can set one of your cards. For example, if you're SLIing, you can set one of your cards to do the encoding for you so it puts no stress whatsoever on the processor. It puts all the stress onto your GPU. Now, if you only have one graphics card and it is NVIDIA, do not do this. Okay? Do not do this. You will cook your card. It will die. Your stream will be out like one frame a second. It will look like you're like you're you could have the fastest gaming PC on the planet, okay guys? But it will look like you're streaming on a potato. Do not do this option. You will drop frames like crazy. You're pushing your card way beyond its specs and you will cook it. So even if you're liquid cooling it, even if you're Jay's two cents and you're running, you know, like ten tight nexes or whatever, yeah, then try it. Other than that, don't bother. Just leave it default x264 okay leave it on default x264 now you could use their setup wizard i don't recommend you do that also disable automatic recording to local drive you will fill up your hard drive so goddamn fast it's not even funny i actually filled up a 500 gig hard drive after streaming for less than three days 
I didn't even realize. I went through there. I was like, what the hell? Why is this file 32 gigs? 32 gigs, guys, for one video file. And it was an eight and a half hours stream of me playing War Thunder. Trust me, disable that. Disable the interleave audio video on the RTMP channel. You don't need that. And in a, now, this is where if you want to enable a stream, a mandatory delay. So even if you found the fastest server and you're worried, like say you're playing Call of Duty or Battlefield or whatever, and you're worried about someone stream sniping you, this is where you can mandatorily set the delay, okay? Set it for up to a minute 30, two minutes, okay, if you want to. And you have to do that in seconds. So 60 seconds is one minute. So 120 seconds is two minutes. So you set it for 120 seconds. Do you see? If you choose to okay i do not need don't need it because if someone wants to stream snipe me they're going to stream snipe me no matter what the delay is they're going to purposely just come after me now a lot of people their processors cannot handle constant bitrate or cbr it doesn't stand for cock and ball reaction or, or whatever no it's just constant bitrate or variable bitrate see now, if you set it to variable, you're going to get this great big red warning saying you're not compatible with Twitch's servers, okay? Variable bitrate is for hitbox, okay? Let me make that abundantly clear. Variable bitrate is for hitbox, not Twitch. Okay? So you want to put that on a constant bitrate, okay? Constant bitrate. Now, your presets. If you want to change these, you want to click this little clog. Now, I've got strict constant bit rate due to my processor. Now, always leave the video stage default. This will allow you to select the frame rates. Okay? Video stage resolution. Set that to default. This will allow you to pick it elsewhere. Okay? So leave those at default, default. Now don't set a default default. Leave the max keyframe intervals at 2.0, which means it's going to pre-render two frames ahead of what you're seeing. Okay, that's what you want. Leave the extra encoder parameters alone. You don't need those. So this is what I do to stream. Now I'm on a, fi uh, I'm on a 500, 500 gigabyte uh, 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 fiber optic from my ISP. So, your settings may differ depending on your connection speed. Um, there are some written guides over on Reddit. There's also some written guides over on Twitch's forums. There's some written guides written on specific game forums. For example, Heroes and Generals has their own forum on finding a perfect balance between bit rate and whatnot. Um, so does uh, Call of Duty, Battlefield. They, they, depending on what game you want to stream. For example, if you're trying to stream Minecraft, it doesn't bloody matter. The thing's are already pixelated as hell, so... Have at it. Now, also, um, presets. It's one thing I didn't cover. This is where your processor is going to matter. If your PC hardware does not match, don't stream. Save your money. Buy a good motherboard. Buy a good processor. Buy, buy you know, minimum of 12 gigs of RAM and a good graphics card and have at it. Otherwise, don't. For example, uh, slow compression means you're sending as much data as your internet connection can handle. But it offloads all the compression onto the CPU. Do not try this unless you are running a Xeon server-grade processor. I have seen monster, you know, i7-56K, uh, 58Ks get their asses handed to them i have seen vishera eight core amd uh cpus get their asses handed to them using anything above fast so medium and slow don't even look at those options they don't exist to you do you understand they do not exist so fast medium high compression medium high cpu usage don't try it without a second gen i7 so you're looking at X79 i7s. I'm running an X58 
okay i'm running a generation i7 below that so max i can look at is fastest medium compression medium cpu usage don't try without an i7 fastest which is the default reasonable compression low cpu usage recommended for most users okay if you're running an i3 or an i5 or any kind of amd go to lowest uh, go, go to super fast and then tweak it as you go along okay guys do not i repeat do not start off on the slow you will kill your fucking processor guys so stick with either super fast very fast or faster okay do you understand now i've got mine set at very fast which is more than enough for what i need okay and then this is where you can set your vbv buffer um again i've got mine matched to my bit rate which is 2200 okay match it to your bit rate okay don't go higher than your bit rate don't go lower than your bit rate match it to your bit rate okay guys and you won't get any you shouldn't get any pixelating and it shouldn't look like a potato okay guys so now we've got all of this sorted out okay you're ready to stream my friend you're ready to play you're ready to have fun okay we've got our game you know so you know we've got our game we're ready to stream you just click broadcast and then you log in with your twitch account details go over to twitch's website and uh, approve there'll be a section where you can say uh, xsplit wants to use your your account approve it done then you click that little go live button right there and i'm not going to click it because it'll make me go live but you click that little live button and take a look at your frames encoded to frames dropped okay if you start seeing frames being dropped lower your bit rate lower your v, v, vb buffer lower them down by a hundred each time until you stop dropping frames then you've met your internet upload download cap okay guys and that's pretty much it now you know how to use xsplit now if you want to get more fancy if you want more in-depth tutorials on how to use xsplit again give this video a thumbs up leave a comment in the comments down below share this video with your friends share this video with your other streaming friends and whatnot if i got any information wrong if i bug it up anywhere leave it in the comment section down below constructive criticism is welcome you know don't be a troll if you didn't like this video say you didn't like this video don't just give it a thumbs down help me to make better content for you okay guys so pretty much that's it this is how i set up my x split okay guys and until then i hope this video helped you if it did please give it a thumbs up if it didn't you know what to do until then guys keep your shelf line keep your enemies down your cobra commander is out and i'll see you guys in the next one